Hello everyone, um, I'm here today to do an African book recommendation video. Um, so I love African literature, I think it's very um, magical and I like the whole cultural um, background of, of African books and know and learn about different cultures within Africa and the difference between the countries. And I especially like um, the books that focus on people in Africa and more than like Africans that have gone out but I have some of those too um, and yeah I, I just thought that if you are unsure on how, where to start um, I can give you some suggestions this is by no means an exhaustive list there are tons of great African books um, but because this is a video it has to be a certain watchable amount of minutes so I'm just going to recommend some of my favorites that um, could be interesting for you um, if you have recommendations for me I would love to know let me know in the comments below um, but yeah without further ado let's start with the recommendations because there are a lot of books to talk about <laughs> so the first book I wanted to talk about is an anthology um, and I think that if you are not sure where to start um, on a certain topic an anthology is always a good way to get a taste of what you're going to get and choose maybe some author that you really like the story of so I have here Africa 39 um, and this is a collection of 39 stories from different African writers from all over Africa North Africa Sub-Saharan Africa Southern Africa um, yeah and and they give a, a, a quite a um, an interesting uh, collection of perspectives and um, ways to write and I think that this is quite quite good to to find authors that you might want to to read from um, there are not a ton of um, super famous authors here in the West so again it, it is it is a w good way to get exposed to other authors that you might not be aware of um, the next one that I'm going to recommend, it's not going to be a surprise because it's one of my favorite books, if not my favorite books, and that's The Wizard of the Crow by Ngugi Wadiongo. Um, this is a Ken um, Kenyan author and it's written writing um, a story of this imaginary country um, that looks a lot like like the, the Kenya when Moi was in power and if you are not um, in, if you are not aware Moi was the second uh, Kenyan president and he I think he was in power for like 20 years um, not always elected by the people um, and yeah it it is sort of magical realism in the sense that the author um, so basically follows this uh, um, this man that um, by chance is mistaken as um, a witch doctor or a wizard um, that can predict things uh, they think um, and um, he's uh, basically wrapped into this this thing that he never wanted to be part of with the government um, and the different ministers and the leader in the government do have these um, different diseases that are basically caused by their will to have more and more power and it's very funny it's very satirical and it's just um, a very smart way to give a representation of um, of these um, very greedy people that often that sometimes end up in power in um, and yeah I I really like this book I I'm due for a reread and I, I think we all should read this maybe we should do a, a read along let me know if you would be interested in a read along of this um, that would be great um, the next um, book I want to recommend I don't have a copy of because I read from the library and that's gonna be the case for quite a few of these um, but it's Freshwater by Akweke Emesi. Um, Akweke Emesi is a non-binary author from uh, Nigeria and the, in Freshwater they, um, they explore um, this identity crisis of the, of the main character uh, 
the main character has mental health, they, um, they have issues with their uh, sexual identity as well, they, they are not sure what they are doing in life and um, a Quake MS is able to take all that and put it within the, um, I think it's the Igbo uh, mythology or I think it's Igbo um, and it explains those those um, identity crises with different spirits that control the body of of this character throughout the novel and we see the struggle of the different um, spirits within that person um, and it is very interesting I have heard that um, Pet is also very good. Um, I also want to read the the death of Vivek Oji, basically all their books. But uh, yeah, I at the moment, unfortunately, I do not have access to all those books. So I'm uh, patiently waiting until my library buys them. Um, but yeah, I, Freshwater I have read and I have loved. So I would recommend if you are interested, especially in a non-binary uh, in a non-binary um, perspective from an African. Next book I'm going to recommend is a more fun one. I think it's also important to to have more fun, less heavy books um, in any of these kind of lists. Um, and that is My Sister the Serial Killer by Eugene Ken Braithway. Um, and this one is basically about these two sisters, um, one of which is like the hardworking one um, that's struggling through life and the other one is this very beautiful woman that just breezes through life um, but she has a problem that she seems to keep killing her boyfriend um, and then calling her sister to clean up the mess um, and it's about mainly focuses on the relationship of these two these two sisters uh, and how they um, interact with respect with uh, um, all the all the men around them um, and I think it's just a lot of fun I read this in a day uh, and I mean it does have some uh, more heavy interesting topics but it's all done in a very lightweighted way that that just makes it easy to read um, and it's just a delight so if you want something fun and quick to read I, I would recommend uh, my sister the serial killer um, the next one, it's again not going to be a surprise if you have been here for a while um, and it's the um, Nervous Condition Trilogy by Sajid Angaremba. This is the second book, The Book of Not. Um, the first one is Nervous Conditions and the last one is um, This Mournable Body which was shortlisted for the Booker Prize this year. And this trilogy basically follows Tambu, uh, Tambu Tsai, who is a young woman in Zimbabwe. And we see her um, growing up in this very divided country um, and we see the um, independence war and we see the crash of the economy that Zimbabwe had and how all of these different things affect Tambu Zai. Even though she is a very, um, a very ambitious uh, young, young woman, um, she still struggles to find her place on this um, society that has been spread to pieces um, due to the colonial past in, in a big part. And I think it does reflect so well. Um, it, like for me, Tambu Tsai, it's the history of Zimbabwe in a person um, and all their struggles and all their frustrations. And the end of the last book is amazing. I don't want to spoil it, but it's amazing for me. I think that it was um, so well done how it represents what the West wants Africa to be right now and how they try to rebel, but it, it just seems to not be, they don't seem to have the power to, to succeed. So yeah, that, that, was, that was a great one. <laughs> um, and I would really recommend as I would all of these books, of course. Um, the next one I want to to recommend is Our Sister Killjoy by Ama Ata Aido. And um, this is a Ghanaian book um, that is basically about this, um, this woman that moves, I believe it was the 
it was in, somewhere in Europe and I think and she moves to Europe to study um, and it's basically about how she misses Ghana and she misses her family and how she struggles to find her place in this new society that is um, kind of very unwelcoming to her. Um, and yeah, I, I I really like this. It's a very short book and it's um, written almost in like a very poetic way. It has a rhythm to it. It's like a long poem. It's not actually a poem, but it does read with that kind of rhythm that just takes you through the story. Um, and yeah, I I had a copy of that and I think I lent it to someone and then never came back. So I have to buy my own copy again because I love that book. Um, but I, yeah, if you have not read My Sister Killed Joy, I would also recommend very, very highly. Um, yeah, and the next one I'm, I'm going to recommend is She Will Be King by Wajetu Moor. This book is set in Liberia um, and Liberia has quite an interesting history um, and so basically when the emancipation of slaves happened in the US um, the US kind of decided that they didn't want the black people there anymore so they took this territory in Africa and they started sending their former slaves to Africa to this place in Liberia um, and it, this book is set when that was happening and it shows uh, how the status of, of these African Americans that were coming to Liberia was different and how um, the people that were already living in these territories uh, were affected and how they reacted. Uh, and I think that's a very interesting uh, thing to explore that I, I had not um, seen explored before. So. Yeah, I would recommend that just for for the, that reason alone. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's also a, a very good book, so I, I would recommend. And the last fiction I have to recommend is one that I have read. Um, and I, I did not remember a lot of. And then I saw this, um, this um, interview uh, from... Wademaya, which is a big uh, YouTuber, that uh, an African YouTuber that goes around Africa and finding like the positive stories of Africans that are succeeding and how he, he's trying to basically break that image that Africa is poor and needs help. Um, and he had an interview with um, Peter Lumumba, which is a professor in, uh, in uh, Kenya, in Nairobi University, I think. And uh, Peter Lumumba was talking a lot about all his um, ideas. He he's um, a, I love I love his ideas. He he um, he thinks that Africa should take charge of themselves and redefine what um, Africa means and redefine what democracy means for them. Um, he has this idea that you know before the Europeans came. Um, Africa was regulated by uh, chiefs and the, these chiefs were democratically uh, elected more or less and these chiefs did discuss things and made coalitions to make bigger things happen and Peter Lumumba uh, advocates for that to be, um, to be brought back and redefine democracy that way. He also um, he also uh, advocates for one Africa with one currency and one um, no borders for Africans to move around. Um, and he has all these super interesting ideas. I will leave the interview below. But the point is that he did recommend The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born by Ayi Kwemi Arma. Um, and this book is it has a very weird cover, but it's uh, basically about um, about those kind of topics, about capitalism uh, in um, in Africa, about Africa, about capitalism, about corruption, about how Africa was affected by um, by colonialism in a negative way. So I I want to reread this. Um, there is a bookmark inside because my husband is also reading it. Um, 
but uh, yeah I would really recommend this I mean it's not who me who recommends it is Peter Lumumba so you should you should um, read this and you should also go um, check the the interview that Guatemala had so those were all my uh, fiction picks but I also want to recommend you some non-fiction picks um, and I have some here uh, so the first person I want to recommend is more like a person than a book itself it's uh, Wangari Madai and uh, Wangari Madai is uh, a Kenyan woman and she won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004 because of her work with environmental causes. Um, she did study uh, biology in, in the US and then she came back to Kenya and started this um, project in which she empowered women to, um, to plant autochthonous trees from Kenya so that the land and the soil can be conserved. Um, and she, she, was all, she was a feisty woman, she was uh, a fighter. Um, she tied herself to trees in Nairobi when the government wanted to take them down to build new malls and stuff. She did all those things. And, but she also was a professor in biology, so she knew what she was talking about. She knew about what kind of trees to plant where and um, the importance of conserving the soil and all these things. And uh, yeah, she's just amazing. So this is her memoir. It's a... Uh, uh, well, this is in Spanish, but um, in, in the English version is called Unbowed, and I would really recommend. Um, and this is another one that she wrote about um, the challenges for Africa, so about why um, Africa is not as developed as it could be, not developed as in um, necessarily economically, but why does it have the problems that it has. Um, and they are both very interesting, and I would recommend her. I think she's amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, if you don't know about her, I think you should go and read more about her <laughs> because she's amazing. Um, then there are another two that I want to recommend sort of together with each other. Um, and that's Africa's Tarnished Name uh, by Chinua Achebe and Dead Aid by Dambi Samoyo. So both of these books basically um, advocate for people to have respect for Africans and um, get rid of this this idea that Africans need uh, need help, they need aid, they need charity, um, and just be treated as equals um, and be allowed to grow the way they want to grow and not us trying to dictate how they should live and how they should, um, yeah, how they should regulate themselves, let them do that themselves. Um, this one is uh, um, some short essays of on that topic by Chinua Achebe and they are uh, a bit old but they are still they still stand true today um, and the way I wanted to pair this with Dead Aid is because Dead Aid goes into the deep conversation about the economics of what that means and uh, what charities do and the damage that they can do to countries um, and why they are not working. This one is a uh, it's uh, difficult to recommend because it's it's done from a very capitalist point of view. So basically, um, Dambi Samoyo is trying to recommend that we let the markets in Africa act the same way that we do in other countries instead of trying to regulate them so that through charity. Um, and though I do agree that we should not tell Africans what they should do with their economy and their money. I also do think that um, capitalism is a very, very dangerous um, idea. Um, and I do not agree with capitalism, but I do agree with her on the way that she talks about how we should basically just have respect for Africans and trade with them the way that we trade with every other country. and. Yeah, basically just let them do what they need to do and not try to push um, our goodwill into them. Um, and yeah, she also talks about how charities often are just huge businesses for the Western countries and how they do not go there to improve the conditions in Africa, but they actually make them worse in some ways. 
And one example that stuck with me is like, there is all these charities that go to Africa with uh, mosquito nets and they distribute them freely there um, for people to have. Uh, but they are not realizing that they are destroying the mosquito net industry of those countries and therefore there are a lot of people that will be out of their jobs because there is some white person that comes and just gives them to everybody for free and then how are you supposed to sell them if everyone else got them for free, right? So think like that um, and yeah, I, I think it is a very interesting idea to explore so I would recommend. Um, and then again, if you are looking for something a little bit more light, um, I think that Born a Crime by Trevor Noah is a great memoir. Um, he's obviously very funny, uh, but he also has a lot of um, very interesting anecdotes and stories to tell. Um, I love Trevor Noah, and I think he's a great person. Um, and he also knows how to write. So yeah, I would recommend that you you read Born a Crime and I will especially recommend the audiobook because he there are some points in which he talks about the Kosha language and he talks in Kosha or however that is um, pronounced but yeah so um, yeah it's it's just a, it's just a delightful read and I think that if you are interested you should go read it um, and then the last non-fiction that I wanted to recommend it's uh, our it's our turn to eat by Michelle Rom, um, and this one is um, it follows uh, John Gidongo, who was a politician in Kenya um, some years ago, and he had to run away because he was part of the he was part of the government. Um, he was a minister, I think, or a secretary of the ministry or something, um, and he saw all the corruption that was going on um, and he wanted to denounce it and everyone in the ministry um, told him not to because then he would expose everybody and basically he, they were saying is don't you want to also have a part like that's the, the natural thing to do and because he said no he had to go to exile so that he was he would not be killed and basically this book does show um, a lot of the mechanics of how corruption works in a government like this um, and yeah I think it's it's quite interesting if you want if you're interested in understanding how corruption works I think this is a great one to pick up um, and then just to finish two books that I have not read yet that I, on my TBR um, physical TBR that I want to read from Africa are The Famished Road by Ben Okri and the uh, Granta magazine, The View from Africa, which are different short stories uh, of different African writers. And again, as I said, with uh, with Africa 31, I think that these are very good to, to find new writers from a certain country or of a certain topic. Um, yeah, uh, and then before I before I finish, I just wanted to um, to shout out or like to share some African booktubers that I also love. Um, and if you have been in this channel for a while, it will not, not be a surprise um, that I recommend you a time to share books. Um, she's a South African booktuber and she's always the most thoughtful person when doing reviews. She mostly does reviews and they are amazing. But also, like recently, she did uh, this series of women writers that she loves. Um, that she thinks are great and uh, those kind of ideas she's just amazing she's just amazing you should go check her out um another one that i want to recommend they haven't made videos for a while but i still want to recommend because i'm hoping they come back um it's a bookish pair and these are two women from nigeria that just have conversations about books uh, on camera and they are delightful and i really like them um, so yeah, I hope they come back. Um, maybe we should all go there and try to push them to make videos again. And the last one I want to recommend is Lexa Reed. Uh, she's a Kenyan booktuber and she basically just, um, yeah, makes reviews, uh, vlogs and um, I always love her blogs because they bring me back to, to Kenya. Um, and she also, um, is part of some great readathons uh, that uh, 
they organize together with some some people so um yeah i would recommend you go check them out um and yeah that was all for me let me know your favorite african books um we can share <laughs> different recommendations and um yeah until next video bye